Hello! I recently needed a sequential switch, or maybe is it called sequential selector? Anyway, I needed something like this thing behind me, but, well, I didn't really know what to search for, or maybe nobody has invented exactly the contraption that I needed for my needs, so I made this. I'm gonna explain in a minute how this thing works, but let's first look at uh, what problem we're actually trying to solve. And, and let me turn this thing off because it is kind of noisy. So the problem I'm dealing with is that I have a lot of composters and I need to be able to select one of them linearly. So first I need to read from this composter and I'm getting a signal level out here. And uh, don't worry about it, this is uh, uh, dealt with differently. I'm not mixing the signals like this because I know this wouldn't work. Anyway, I want to read this composter, then I want to read this composter, then I want to read this composter, then I want to read that one. And then when I'm done with this one, I need to move around back to this one in exactly the same time it takes to move from this one to this one, from this one to this one. I need this to be constant time because the timing on the machine is already complicated enough and I don't want this mechanism to make the whole problem even more complicated. So I needed a contraption that can do this in constant time. And by the way, if you're thinking that you maybe recognize what's going on here, yes, this is for the wall printer. I'm working on a slightly improved version of the wall printer. And yes, I do have a solution for this in the wall printer. Unfortunately, that solution isn't really easily expandable. And by that, I mean, if I want to add or remove composters to the wall printer as it is now, I pretty much have to change the entire design of the selector line. And that's too much pain. So I decided to design a new version of this mechanism. And uh, I wanted to use instant dropper lines. Mostly because I was inspired by Boyen that has been using and solving a very similar problem for his uh, fuel efficient furnace array. Except that he didn't have the problem of needing constant time between this and this. Or maybe he did and he solved it differently. I can solve it differently. So I had to make a mechanism that I thought would work with instant dropper lines. So let's, let's look at how instant dropper lines work in case you don't know. Instant dropper lines work with update order. So imagine that you power this dropper first, and of course I place them in the wrong direction, but that is fine. I will place them like this. Imagine there is one item in this dropper. I'll put a lever in here. And what happens if we power all of these droppers at the same time within the same tick? That's where the magic of update order comes. Because you could say that this dropper gets powered first, this dropper gets powered first, maybe this dropper gets powered first, who knows? Uh, fortunately, we have a little bit of control over this. So, for example, a rail line is updated. If I power this block here, it will power the entire rail line here. But the way the updates propagate through the rail line is that this rail block gets powered first, then that one, then that one, then that one. The furthest away gets powered first, and then all the power goes back to the first one. That's just how the game is implemented. There is no guarantee that this is going to work like that forever, but it does. And then, since we get these updates in this particular order, the observers will observe them in that particular order as well and that will allow them to power the droppers in that particular order. This is reliable. You can see that I have nothing in these droppers here, only a lever here, like nothing in there. If I now power this, it gets shot out here. Now, what happens if I power them in the other direction? Like I said, this one gets powered first and this one gets powered last. So let's pick that one up, put it in here, and now, boom, it doesn't get shut out because it's going to be in here. And if I power it again, it's going to be in here. And that's how we can single step the item through the droppers in here. So we, you can already see where this is going. If I put comparators here, I can see where the item is. Mm. 
and now it got shut out i hope yes it is there so technically we can do something like this we can take this dropper up and then have an instant dropper line here and then have a dropper that shoots the item down so the item would be going in a circle and in this direction it is single stepping and in this direction it is an instant dropper line of course life is not that simple because we cannot just power the droppers like this and just for completeness if you want the item to go in the other direction so this for this to become an instant dropper line we can replace this with a redstone dust yes redstone dust updates are directional but if we power them like this and the line of redstone dust is straight the updates will propagate in this direction so i can put an item in here and boom it gets shot out and if i reverse these let's just quickly do that you see that this is also working bam, 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 bam. we put an item in here doesn't have to be a lever it could be a piston we can see that it moves also a single step at a time so this is also reliable it depends just in which direction you want the items to go there are some certain other differences between the redstone lines and rails but we'll get into that later anyway here is the finalized machine as you can see this dropper is pointing up we have the dropper line going in this direction because there is a rail here so of course it needs to go in that direction and then the return instant line is down here with uh, this dropper pointing down and all these dropper pointing in this direction and if we just power it you can see that the item is now at the end and if i click it once it immediately goes here so the way we power the droppers is that we power this block next to the single step droppers and the instant return droppers are powered by quasi connectivity uh, the problem is that we need to update these droppers because of course they don't know that this block got powered so they don't know that they need to be powered by quasi connectivity and this turns out to be a little bit weird and for that we're gonna look at this machine here because initially i thought oh well i can just use note blocks we always use note blocks for everything to update droppers and pistons and, and whatnot and uh, see what happens here the item well never appears here i don't actually know what's going on but there is some weirdness going on if i replace these note blocks with pistons This machine now works correctly. I have other variants I have tried here. For example, redstone dust. It happens to work in uh, this exact position. But if I would move the machine to the exact same position as this one, it would stop working. And I don't know why this is positional. I absolutely do not understand why it would be like that. The, the same with this one. This one also has note blocks and still has the same problem i can't explain this i i can only speculate that this has something to do well my guess is that the pistons have a second update when they retract and that is somehow updating the droppers to not be confused i have sometimes seen that the droppers stay powered after one pulse but i'm not sure if i can reproduce this if if we look at the droppers now they are not triggered so they it doesn't seem that there should be any problem, but it still misbehaves. So I have no explanation for this. So this is the basic machine. It can be clocked by a clock as fast as six game ticks. It has maximum of nine channels because that's how far we can push the rail. The items or the signal moves away from uh, the side where we power it. And that's one of the requirements I have for my machine. I need to be able to choose which direction the signal moves to. By the way, if you're looking at the world download, there will be this world will, will be a world download with all the mess I left around. And the mess, many of these machines are just pasted in. So I could test that this is not 
positional or directional or anything like that. But the machines that are interesting that I'm going to talk about a little bit more are marked with the shroom lights here. This one is exactly the same as that one, except that the pistons are turned around and I'm powering the blocks from the side just to see if that works. And that works just fine. You can see it here. But the next interesting version is this one. And here we are using redstone dust instead of the rails. So like I explained there, this works just fine as well. And uh, the difference is, well, it's still six game ticks. It cannot be m made mo to move faster because then the uh, dropper sees up. It has maximum of 15 channels as opposed to nine that the rail one can do. And uh, the blocks are moving towards the power rather than away from it in case that is a problem that you're having. But what if you don't like clicking droppers, but you love the sound of pistons firing? Well, all of them have lots of piston noise, but you hate droppers. Well, in that case, well, I'm the piston feed tape man. You can quite clearly see what's going on here. And this is the original setup I had in the wall printer. The problem with this is that it is a little bit awkward to expand this. If I want to add one more module like this, I need to expand the piston feed tape to be a multiple of the number of modules blocks long. So the piston feed tape now is 24 blocks long, and that's why it has 24 divided by three modules that is controlling with three composters, as you can see here. And uh, the problem is that if, if I need to add one more module like this, I now need to expand this piston feed tape to 27 blocks at least, or maybe 36. And the reason why we need to have at least three composters, it is not enough with one. It is because we can't really have a comparator in front of this block because we cannot read it reliably. I, ca I can show you just like this. I will add an indicator here, and we can see that this piston never goes up, even though there is a composter in front of it. I can't really explain why we can push a composter from the side and it gets registered by the comparator, but not from above, but that's how it works. So to be able to expand the piston feed tape version, we need to recalculate how many blocks there need to be in the piston feed tape, and then we probably need to reroute this because this is the most convenient layout for a piston feed tape when it only has two layers. If it has, well, 27 blocks, well, I would need to add three blocks somehow like this, and then it's an odd number of blocks in the feed tape, so both sides cannot be powered at the same time. It, it just turns out uh, to be very awkward. But if you have a static setup that only needs a certain number of modules, this is definitely an alternative. And of course, these don't need to be composters. You can just put a solid block here and have a power source go through it or however you want to do it. And by the way, th these don't have to be pistons here. I'm just using the pistons to push up the blocks because that's the easiest thing to see. But I don't know, you could, for example, use uh, redstone lamps, I guess. That should work too. Haven't tried it. Oh, uh, well. Too many of them get powered, but you know what I mean. You can extract the power from here with anything you want. But what if you're mad and you need something like this, but for a hundred modules? Uh, well, uh, this just happened earlier today. So I was showing uh, this version to Boyan, and uh, he immediately went to instant rail repeater lines and helped me build this. It's mostly his design. Well, the, the parts at the bottom, as you can see, are exactly like all the other ones. He showed me how to do this part and especially figure out some issues down here. This part here is uh, an uh, instant rail repeater line tail made by someone, and I cannot pronounce that, Puik? Uh, P-W-O-U-I-K. Uh, I'll, I'll write it in the description. And the rest is apparently just arcane knowledge. I'm unfortunately not very good at instant repeater lines and or instant rail lines. So uh, yeah, uh, don't listen to me what I have to say about them. But the good news about 
the rail lines is that the signal propagates the same way. So it propagates from the back to the front. And, and by the way, let's just turn this on because it takes a long time for this thing to wrap around. And I'll try to stop talking when this thing is about to wrap around, which is actually about to happen right now. Let's try to see the whole thing at the same time. Bam, there it happened. It is instance, I have measured it. It is exactly the same timing as the other ones. Well, this one is slower because this one can only run on eight game ticks. But the update order of the rails is exactly the same as there. The problem is that we can't really take outputs here. So, as you can see on all of these contraptions, we are just reading the rails through some observers and then powering blocks below them. We can't do that here because this observer basically ruins everything. So instead, Boyan came out with this. Think about how the observers are firing. It's first this one, then that one, then that one, all within the same tick. But we need to power something below them that is also going from that direction into that direction. This observer fires first. This one is irrelevant. It's just there because I copy pasted things that way. But this observer fires first, and then it powers this line of rails where it's going to power it from that end to this end. So this observer fires, then that observer fires, and uh, schedules updates to the rails in this order. Then this one fires, and the rails get updated in this order, and you see what's going on. So we have activated rails and the powered rails alternating all the way eight blocks apart, exactly. And as you can see, this works fine too. The mechanism below is exactly the same as those over there. There might be a more efficient way to send the signal around here, but we just couldn't figure it out. But now, the last part. Uh, how do you actually build this line correctly? Because this is more black magic than uh, I generally like in machine my machines. We have observer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks, observer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. I'm just going to build this many. Next, just build this part, uh, just treat it as a cargo cult. It's a black magic machine. I don't actually know how this works, uh, but it does. Put down the observers in the obvious way. There is nothing complicated about this, but this is where the magic happens. As you can see, the rails are very much misbehaving and they're blinking. And rather than doing something useful, we have created a clock. And it just happened to work for me. You are joking. Yes, it is actually working. Uh, I don't know what to say. It happens to work. If it doesn't work, and when building this one I had lots of trouble, do something like this. Place a block of redstone here to power things. Place a block of redstone here to power things. You can now remove this block of redstone, place a block of redstone, place a block of redstone, place a block of redstone. You can now remove the blocks in this direction, place one here, remove, remove, and you should be fine. Maybe. If not, repeat 15 times until something works. Unfortunately, I have to treat this as a cargo cult because I don't really understand why this works. I will eventually, someday, but I don't yet understand how this works. Anyway, this is not going to be a tutorial or a guide about instant rail lines. I'm sure someone else has made them. I haven't just had time to look them up. So if you actually want to understand how the instant rail lines work, well, look up someone else's guide. There will be a world download with, well, all this in the description. If you have any questions or ideas, please leave them in the comments and I'll answer anything I understand. Thanks a lot for watching and have a good sequencing. Bye.